so in one of my recent videos, I discovered that the Pabio masking fluid marker does not necessarily uniformly perform. And I wanted to put that to the test today with two different papers and a bunch of different types of paints. So in one of my backer exclusive videos, I was using the Pabio masking fluid pin, which I got in my Sketchbox water media set. I was using it to do, of course, some fine line masking. That is what this does. does that is what this is designed for. Now my nib, the one that came with it had clogged up. So I switched it out. This one looks like it might be clogging up as well. All of these sort of issues are definitely things we need to know about, especially if I'm going to recommend this pen as part of this year's holiday gift guide. So I really wanna put it through its paces before I can make such a recommendation. So today we're testing it out on cellulose-based watercolor paper, and we have here Strathmore 140-pound watercolor paper. We're testing it out on cotton rag watercolor paper, and this one has quite a bit of texture, so I think we're going to have a nice little gamut here with paper types. I'm not testing it out with handmade watercolor paper because I have found that masking fluids and handmade watercolor papers tend not to be friends anyway, even if you're using the bottled stuff. So that's not really something I feel the need to test. We're also going to test it out with some dye-based watercolor markers, some dye-based watercolors, some pigment-based watercolors that are intended to be painted on really thickly, as well as some intensely hued pigment-based watercolors. So we've got several different types of watercolors and several different types of watercolor papers. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to divide my paper up into four sections. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some of our Pabio masking fluid, and hopefully this one has not jammed up. But I'm going to apply it to all eight quadrants. And if this thing is jammed up, that's also important to know. And those of you who are maybe more familiar with this product than I am, um, would you let me know in the comments below what I'm doing wrong with this thing or if this is just kind of a common issue. So I cleaned out the other nib as best as I could and I know I shouldn't be holding it on cap like this. I'm actually looking for my Copic tweezers. I cleaned out my other nib using alcohol, rubbing alcohol because that is a solvent for can't find them. I just used them. Anyway, uh, rubbing alcohol is a solvent for latex. And that's what these use is latex. I try to use craft tweezers to pull it out. I don't think that's going to work. Ah, okay. All right. Let's see if the other nib doesn't work. I may have to buy a replacement nib. I'm gonna go soak this in rubbing alcohol. Hopefully this will work. Ha, all right, so cleaning it did work. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, holding it down and not holding it down, just make different marks on all four quadrants of the paper. I do notice that the flow slows down. So you do have to pump it as you go. Now it does come with two replacement nibs and perhaps I am supposed to soak it in rubbing out, switch it out and soaking, soak it in rubbing alcohol every time I use it. The instructions didn't say anything about that on the package, but perhaps I should have gone to the website. It also seems to develop little nodules of dried masking fluid, which is not really surprising, just something worth noting. And the nib does seem fairly scratchy. 
So it seems like this could be a product that might work well on inexpensive papers, but maybe not so well on expensive papers. But that's why we're testing it out on two different types of paper today. Yeah, it just sort of peters out. Now, what I liked about this product is it allows you to mask really fine lines, which is something I know a lot of my comic artist friends are interested in. And I've also heard that you can do a similar technique with a ruling pin, but I would imagine the masking fluid dries in the ruling pin really quickly. So that's why this was kind of ideal if it works for this year's Christmas list. All right, so this is the cotton rag paper. And I've learned through a lot of bad experience that it's best to remove your masking fluid. Oh, okay, that nib just came right out. It's best to remove your masking fluid as soon as you're done using it and as soon as the paper is dry. The longer it kind of just sits, the more it's gonna tear, the more likely it is to tear up your paper. And I found that out the hard way. Someone had recommended you let it cure for 24 hours, you paint, and then you let it dry for 24 hours and then you remove it. And I tore up a carapage doing that. I was able to fix it, but it was definitely a really nasty experience. So I found, just let it dry fully. That doesn't actually take very long, maybe 10 minutes at most. Um, it's very, prone to being quick drying. Even if you apply a thick amount, it tends to dry very quickly. And then remove it once your watercolors in that area have dried. I've also found that you can do some masking. Man, I'm really having to pump this thing a lot. Are you guys watching this? I'm sure someone out there is cringing. Maybe I'm supposed to do a long pull, uh, a long plunge, but it doesn't seem to make much of a positive difference. Maybe I'm trying to over apply. I'm trying not to go too thick, but I am trying to do enough that you can actually see it since it is tinted blue. Now, years ago, I tried out a Molotov graphics pin, which uses like a compressed fiber nib to apply the masking fluid and that thing also died on me and there wasn't really a good way to clean out the nib. This one is kind of hollow plastic and it just sort of serves as like a tube or a conduit that we can apply our masking fluid with. And I believe it comes in other sizes, but this one has already lasted longer than the Molotov one because the Molotov one was like, I really liked it the first time I used it and I was really excited about it and then it clogged immediately. So perhaps I'm just doing everything wrong and I need you guys to point out the error of my ways. I mean, these pins seem really neat and very handy, especially for like watercolor comic artists who might need to mask off really fine areas or um, travel watercolorists who need a convenient way to dispense masking fluid that isn't gonna require a lot of setup. I mean, I have a couple of videos where I show how you can, how a beginner can use masking fluid, like some basic tips and tricks for good masking fluid application. And basically the best way I've found is, I have found that using a non-colored masking fluid, specifically this one, this is the one I've had the best results with, with a synthetic watercolor brush, and then you coat your watercolor brush with watercolor brush soap, and then you dip that just straight into your masking fluid. And then immediately when you're done with your application, you wash it out, taking care to kind of scrub out the masking fluid from the bristles using your fingers, just to kind of work it out. And that, that takes some space. It takes some prep room. Okay, so it definitely doesn't perform as well on this cotton rag paper. I'm really struggling with it. You guys can also see how much material I consume for these reviews and these per these products are purchased. So I am kind of wasting this product to test it out, but it allows us to know whether or not this is going to work for us in the future. All right, so I'm going to go clean out this nib and clean out my other nib because maybe that's how I'm supposed to do it. I don't really know. And I'm going to return and we're gonna go ahead and get started on this test. 
All right, so we're going to start with the cellulose paper and I'm going to start with kind of our more traditional watercolors. And we have here the Core Mini. You guys may have seen the review and the field test for this mini watercolor palette. And I really enjoy this palette this year. I enjoy Core watercolor in general. I think they're really nice. I think their blues are really true. So it was a pleasure to be able to purchase and review this palette for you guys. And I'm just using an inexpensive Sumi brush. And my goal is just to test out a variety of different colors to see if anything has like a particular effect on whether or not this masks. Now what's neat about Core cool watercolors is they use Aquazole rather than gum arabic. So your colors are really true and pure. So we're gonna get some really, really intense color today. Their aquamarine, uh, not aquamarine, I'm so sorry. Their ultramarine is particularly nice because it's a warm blue. And since Aquazole is clear, you don't get any of the sort of yellow pollution that you would get from gum arabic. So you get a really pure aquamarine. So it's about 10 minutes from when I applied our gum arabic to when I started painting over it. And I'm going to finish all my tests before I remove any of it. I'm just doing a little bit of a second layer here or there. All right, so that is the core palette in this quadrant here. And I'm gonna keep where I swatch consistent. So next, I'm going to do the Gansai Tombi, which are Japanese Gansai style watercolors. So they're a little bit more thick, a little bit more opaque. I'm gonna do that in this bottom quadrant here. And I have also reviewed these watercolors on a couple of different occasions. You can check out a big full review with an explanation of how these watercolors work over at natosoup.blogspot.com. Actually, um, I will pop a link to that in the description down below. Always worth checking the description for links. I'll also link the products in case you fall in love with anything. But these are a little bit different from Western watercolors in several ways. They use an animal hide glue as the binder rather than using gum arabic or aquazole. So they're intended to be painted a little bit more thick, actually a lot more thickly than Western watercolors, although you can use them thinly like Western watercolors. And they tend to be a little bit more affordable but they are, of course, a different product. They are pigment-based, and you can get some really beautiful colors. And I'm just using the little set I got from the Sketchbox Water Media box. Not necessarily trying to get all 12 colors on here, but if we can, that's good too. Just do a little bit of glazing here and there. All right, I'll let these dry a little bit and go change out my water, and then we'll switch over to our dye-based watercolors. These have dried a little bit, but are not completely dry. I'm gonna switch on over now to the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers. These are dye-based water color brush markers, something like that. And I'm not really going to use any water in this instance. I'm just going to do kind of a straight application. Now, I will acknowledge that if you're using something kind of scrubby, these are kind of soft, so they shouldn't be an issue. But like, let's say you're using the compressed fiber nibs on Winsor & Newton 
watercolor markers and you're just directly applying them to the paper, you may have some problems with your masking fluid. It may lift up, it may kind of get worn off. So that's not really something I'm testing for today, but if you guys are curious, I can test it in the future. But I did want to see if like a direct application of dye-based ink kind of sinks under the paper or sinks into the paper and kind of gets under the masking fluid, kind of negating the point of the masking fluid. We'll see, I don't actually know for sure. That's why we're testing. Dye-based watercolors tend to handle a little bit differently from water-based watercolors, I'm um, sorry, pigment-based watercolors. And I enjoy using both, um, but I like knowing what I'm working with. And I like kind of being able to keep that in mind as I work. I'm an artist who really likes to understand her materials and how they handle and how they handle on what paper, which is one of the reasons I do so many of these tests is I think it makes me a stronger artist when I know how to combine my materials. I'm not really trying to get much blending. You can get a little bit of blending. These are kind of juicy watercolor markers. Um, so you can get blending effects quite easily, but that's not necessarily what I'm doing. I was just trying to fill the space with color. All right, and then finally, for this particular test, we're going to use the Viviva color sheets. I also got these in my sketch box, water media box, and I never really use them a whole lot. And these are kind of dry dye-based watercolors, very, very similar, if not identical to the Peerless watercolors, which I've also reviewed here on this channel. And I still need to do a comparative review of the two where I pit them head to head. Now my friend Kabocha did do, um, she took it a little step further than I did and she's already done a light fast test. She did find the Viviva watercolors are much less light fast than the Peerless watercolors, but both are dye based watercolors. So neither are going to be particularly light fast. So that's something you want to be aware of. You can get some really nice, brilliant colors, but let's say you're a card maker and uh, you use these to make a card for someone because the colors are so beautiful and the card turned out really well. And they put the card out on their desk near a window so they could look at it and be reminded of the care and the love and the time you put into it. According to Kabocha, these fade fairly fast. I think they started fading significantly in like six weeks. And Kabocha, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. Please do correct me if I'm wrong. And if you wanna drop or send me a link, I'll edit the description to include the test if you wanna include it, if you wanna make it public. But to me, that was enough of a difference where you really need to know that information, I think, as an artist, as a hobbyist, as a crafter, however you consider yourself, you need to know that kind of information because it's gonna affect how you use the materials and it's gonna affect how people can display the materials. So if I were doing a commission, as beautiful as some of these colors are, I would definitely, first of all, I would ask my customer if it's okay if I use non light fast materials. Some will say yes, because they really are more interested in the digital aspect, like owning a digital copy that they can use as an avatar or as a background on their computer. So sometimes people will say yes to that kind of stuff. But other times, you know, they want to display it in their home and they're going to say no because they want something that's going to be more archival, something that's going to actually last a while. And I think the short, the short shelf life on these dye-based watercolors really prohibits it from that sort of use. I mean, if you're doing, let's say you're sending someone you care about a seasonal card, they can, if it's winter time, I mean, there might not be enough sun to ruin it, but if it's like a 4th of July card or something, a, a summertime card or a birthday card, you know, and they might want to have it out for a while. Maybe it's um, an, an announce, like a birth announcement. Like they're going to want to have that out so people can enjoy it. And if you're using things that are not archival or not light fast, it may not even last the whole season they wish to have it up. 
so yeah, the colors are gorgeous. They're very vibrant. They're very clean. That's an aspect of dye-based watercolors. That's what makes them enjoyable, but they just don't stand up to the test of time. Okay, so we have the coral watercolors, we have the mermaid watercolors, we have the Viviva watercolors, and we have the Gensai Tombi watercolors, all on the cellulose paper. I'm gonna let these dry out, and I'm gonna switch over to our cotton rag paper. For the cotton rag paper, I'm going to work in reverse, but I'm gonna keep everything in the same order. So we're gonna start with the Viviva, cause I've got that out, I've got that handy. And I'm gonna put it in the same quadrant. Another problem I noticed with the Viviva color sheets is they get used up fast. Compared to the Peerless watercolors, you get a lot more paint with the Peerless or you can get the really small set of the Peerless and pay a lot less than these. And what this is, is it's dye that's been applied to a paper or to a film. I believe with the Peerless, it's, a, it's applied to like um, an acetate or maybe an acetate alternative, similar to Duralar. With the Viviva, they're applied to like uh, chipboard or um, cardstock so you actually can't get all of the color because some of it has permeated into the paper itself whereas with the with the peerless I believe you can get more of the color out now the color movement on this watercolor paper is nice uh, cellulose watercolor paper tends to stay wet on the inside, on the interior of the paper, longer than cellulose paper. So the dry time can be a little bit longer, but it also leaves your paper open for wet into wet blending techniques, which is a lot of why people enjoy using watercolor is for those sort of spectacular blending techniques. So if you're having trouble with your, getting your watercolors to blend, you might want to look at your paper again. And I know compared to like $3 a package, or $5 a package, $15 for 15 sheets seems like an astronomical price to pay. But I believe you'll really see the difference. And there's some really affordable cotton rag papers on the market. Blick makes the Blick Premier watercolor paper, which is what I often use for my tests because it's a really nice watercolor paper, cotton rag watercolor paper. And um, it's much more economical for me as someone who reviews these products to be able to use that than it is to use, you know, Arches or like I'm using Langton Prestige right now or to use Moulin de Roy or Canson Heritage. It's much more affordable for me to use the Blick Premier. And I, I really like the paper. I think it's a quality paper. So I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything by using it but I would recommend giving that a shot. And as those of you who've watched my channel for a while know, I don't have any sponsors other than my wonderful patrons on Patreon. So Blick is not paying me to like their stuff. I just like their stuff. Next, we're going to use the mermaid markers over here in this quadrant. And these don't really like cotton rag papers as much just because you have to use a lot more of them. So for this test, I may actually use just a little bit of water. We have a bigger space to fill, but I'm primarily gonna stick with using just the markers in this instance. Now using something like a masking fluid pen with watercolor markers is something that I think a brush calligrapher might be particularly interested in, in order to achieve some interesting effects. So I think this is a test that's definitely worth doing. Oh, this one's very juicy. Now y'all might want to be careful because dye-based watercolors can be very staining on clothes and on hands. However, they're highly water reactive, which means if you put even a little bit of water on them, on paper, they'll often reactivate. So that's just something you kind of want to be careful of if you're not used to using these types of watercolor pens. 
and they're capable of delivering some really vibrant color. Again, that's because they're dye based. And for artists who maybe want sort of the vibrancy of alcohol markers and feel like watercolor can't deliver that, this could be a good jumping off place. One of the big compliments I get on my watercolor art is how vibrant, how saturated everything is. I feel like people come, it, people who do not do watercolor look at watercolor as like a very pastel and washed out medium, but it can be very vibrant. And I don't just, I mean, I will sometimes use dye-based watercolors, but because I do a lot of layering with my watercolor, it's not necessarily my material of choice for say my comic pages. But there's definitely very uh, very saturated, bright colors available in watercolor. A lot of the petrochemical colors, like the quinacridones or the phthalo kind of colors for the dioxine violet. So some of the newer colors that came about with modern chemistry, those are going to be able to de deliver a lot of color, a lot of saturation. That's another area that core kind of excels in. So you guys saw that on the cotton rag paper, the markers kind of blend themselves. So if you're interested in more of an easy blend effect without having to actually blend your colors, cotton rag paper is a wonderful choice. So I'm gonna go clean out my water cup and we're gonna switch over to our pigment watercolors. Next, we're going to use our core watercolors, you know, the ones I was just talking about. I wanna point out how quickly the core watercolors activate as well. I haven't really done any pre-activation, but they kind of just sprang to life. Now, some of these colors are transparent, some are opaque, some are naturally occurring, some are chemically derived. So I think it's a pretty good combination of various watercolors to sort of test this Pobillo pen out. And hopefully I've introduced you to some watercolors you might be interested in as well, maybe explained a few things. I also find that watercolors in general tend to be more vibrant on nice cellulose papers. All right, now we're gonna switch on over to the Kuretake Gansai Tambi, the last of our watercolors for today. And although I've talked a little bit about the watercolors, this isn't really a comparison of the watercolors, although it does kind of give you a comparison view. We could use this as a bit of a comparison for different types of watercolors. So perhaps in another video, I can use this as a sample and discuss that. Always really nice when I'm testing one thing and the end product I create can be used to demonstrate something else. It's always so helpful for me because I end up having to generate a lot of this kind of stuff. So it's nice when things can be kind of reused. That's a beautiful mix there, the ultramarine with that kind of rose color. I always really enjoy ultramarines mixed with roses. They make for some really pretty purples. Right, so I am going to let both of my samples dry fully. I love how vibrant the colors are on the cotton rag paper. We're gonna let them dry fully and then we're gonna come back and remove our masking fluid and we're gonna see how it actually handles. So both of our examples have had a chance to dry. Again, at the top is the cellulose, at the bottom is the cotton rag. We're gonna go ahead and start with the cellulose and I have here a rubber cement slash masking fluid pickup that can be used for either. And yes, I know you can supposedly use your finger for it, but I have never had any luck. What this does is it basically sticks to the masking fluid. 
So as we can see here, what we should be looking for is a really nice, clearly defined mask. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the masking fluid from the cellulose base paper. I'm gonna do that in time-lapse. Okay, so the masking fluid has been completely removed from the cellulose paper. I found that it removed fairly cleanly. There was no tearing. Um, there wasn't really much smudging either. The only real problems I noticed are you see these kind of scratchy areas, which can provide interest. I think they do look interesting. Um, and if you're going for kind of like a graffiti approach, they could be really useful, but they are not necessarily what everyone is looking for when they're masking and it's something that did come up with that type of masking pin nib. Um, I also find the nib fairly hard to clean. I let it soak in rubbing alcohol and then I kind of pull out the um, masking fluid by hand. It would be really helpful if I had some sort of needle or something that I could kind of use to help clean it. I could try using a sewing needle as well. I'm bringing that up because it's something that people who purchase this product are probably going to need to know. Um, I don't actually know offhand if they sell additional nibs. It comes with two nibs, so I assume we're intended to be able to clean it out, but it also doesn't come with any sort of cleaning instructions. Now I'm just kind of rereading it and it doesn't really say on the pin itself. So next we're going to try this with the cotton rag paper. Um, again, just for your, just so that you guys know, this is the coral watercolor. So these are aquasol based watercolors. They use pigments. There are some chemical synthetic colors. Some of those may be more prone to staining. That's why I bring it up. Down here is the Gansai Tombi. These tend to contain a different type of binder. You can kind of see it here. It's looking shiny on the cellulose paper. They tend to sit on top of the paper surface more and they're designed to be a little bit more opaque. This masks that off, no problem. This is the Viva Viva color sheet. So these are dye based watercolor applied with water. I thought that perhaps with the dye based watercolor we would have more problems. There is a little bit of staining over here with the purple. It kind of seeped in under the masking fluid, but it's not, it's not like horrific it's a little noticeable but it's not a big deal and i think if you painted the rest of the area you wouldn't really notice it and then we have the mermaid markers where i don't think there's any well around the screen over here i'm gonna pick up a little bit of masking fluid um around this green we also got some staining some seepage underneath and that could be because dye just tends to be um, have much 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 smaller particles than if if any particles at all but it the color is much finer than say pigments. Okay, so next we're going to look at the cotton rag paper. So here we have the Langton Prestige. I applied the color in the same places. So the same brands are in the same four quadrants. We're gonna start over here with the core. And I figured if I had any problems, it would probably be with the cotton rag paper. I will say that the masking pin is pretty scratchy on cotton rag paper and it's hard to get a nice clean line quickly. So you're gonna have to work a little more slowly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove the rest of the masking frisket in time-lapse. I realize I just got a little confused. This is actually the Gansai Tambay and this is the core. So I'd gotten a little bit turned around. I just wanted to clarify that for you guys. Thank you. 
I feel like on the cellulose paper, you could tell my pen was kind of going dry. On the, I mean, on the cotton rag paper, sorry. On the cellulose paper, because there isn't as much of a tooth to the paper, it glides a little bit smoothly, but I had trouble getting a consistent line without it getting kind of scratchy, without it getting kind of skippy on the cellulose paper as well. It was particularly bad though on the cotton rag paper, partially because I am trying to cover a larger area with it, but also I think it was the tooth of the paper and the fact that the nib in this has a tendency to clog and run dry. I don't know what the nib solution for a pen, like a masking fluid pen would really be. I don't know what the best solution is because it seems like almost anything would get kind of gunky, but maybe a tip sort of like what they use in the Neopico line white, where you have, it's kind of like a pump action felt nib, but I think it uses like a little plastic nib part inside there. Maybe something like that would work best. I, I actually don't know. This seems like a job for a material scientist. I do think there is a demand for these things. And I think if people could trust them more, they would be more popular and more artists would use them. They do seem to have an appeal kind of across the spectrum from watercolorists who do more fine art style watercolor to illustrators, to comic artists, to brush letterers, to crafters. They definitely seem like there's an appeal there that could benefit a lot of different people. So for this, the only problem area I really found was over here with the mermaid markers where they kind of seeped in, like the blues and the greens would kind of seep under, but it masked all right on everything else. So I know I switched the orientation. I'm gonna go with, through this again for you guys. So these are the core. These are the Viva Viva sheets. These are the mermaid markers. These are the Kuretake Gansai Tambi. Core Viva Viva mermaid Gansai Tambi. Uh, pigment, pigment, dye, dye, pigment, pigment, dye, dye. Just to help make things a little bit easier. So I think the Pabio masking fluid pin works a little bit better on cellulose based papers or maybe hot press papers, papers with very little tooth. For papers that have a lot more tooth, it will work, but you're going to get more skipping and starting. Now that again could be because I had actually completed this part of the test after this part and perhaps the nib had just been out in the oxygen too long and too much of the liquid latex had dried in the nib itself. There's a lot of points of failure here. However, what I was really testing for, I was testing to see if it would tear up the paper. I was testing to see if it would actually mask. It does perform quite well. So I do think it is a useful artist tool. I do think it is a useful crafters tool. I do think it works as promised. And I would like to see companies continue to develop these so we can maybe have find a solution for the clogging issues that seem to come up. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, it was as always, it was a pleasure. I hope this tutorial was useful, helpful, and informative for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope I'll see you guys again in the near future with another tutorial slash demonstration. If you enjoy watercolor, if you'd like to learn more about watercolor, you can head on over to my blog, natasuit.blogspot.com, and check out my watercolor basic series. I walk you through step-by-step the process for completing a watercolor comic page or a watercolor illustration. So it's really aimed more at comics and illustration people or maybe card makers or maybe people who just enjoy doodling with watercolor. Be great for those sort of people. If you're interested in seeing my watercolor art, you can check it out by clicking my portfolio link in the description below, or you can read my comic, Seven Inch Kara, which is a beautiful watercolor all ages comic for free at sevenincharacom or sevenincharacom These sort of tests do get expensive. They consume a lot of resources and they are only made possible thanks to the generosity of my art nerds over on Patreon. If you like what I do and you'd like to help me continue to do it, you can head on over to patreon.com slash for information on how to join the art nerd community. Community. So hopefully I'll see you guys again really soon. I hope you found this video useful, helpful, and informative, and maybe even a little bit inspiring. And should anyone feel like forwarding this on over to Pabio, please feel free to do so. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys.